one of the lies of Satan that sealed up the Word of God for the past 1,680 years was that we do not live in a simulation. Revelation 6, verse 12. That the lights from distant novas are proof that we live in an ancient world and universe. And we survive novas and all other kind of events through the years. But the solar micronova event, how every eye will see the Lord coming in the clouds, Revelation 1, 7. It's, they're unique to this world. Before the second age, Ephesians 2, 7, of the Lord's Sabbath, Second Peter 3, 8. Well, we understand the coming of the Lord in the clouds is represented by it. We understand now that novas, we understand now the solar micronova event, but in about 43 years, is how the Lord is going to be seen by every eye is coming in the clouds. Second Peter 3, 8, one day to the Lord is, is a thousand for men. So the Lord's Sabbath, you see, for six days, God let men do things men's way. And doing that, Satan ruled over the kingdoms of men. But for 1,000 years, the Lord's day, or the Lord's Sabbath, the Lord will rule over this world. If the Lord has granted to you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, this is what we're talking about, that for 6,000 years, Satan rules over, rules over the kingdoms of men, and Christ rules over the kingdom of heaven for 1,000 years. The Lord has granted you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, and you believe that the solar micronova event is how every eye is going to see Christ coming with the clouds. If you want the Lord to save you from his nova judgment, Ephesians 2, 7, John 12, 31 and following, remember Satan was cast off this world at the first coming. The solar micronova event that represented the first coming of the age of the kingdom of heaven. If you want the Lord to save you from his nova judgment, if you want him to free you from every wind of the doctrine of men, Satan's make a sword, Revelation 6, 4. If you want to be saved from this perverse generation, it's going to be burned off this earth, cleaned up by space weather, 2, 17 through 40. John 12, 31 again, Satan and evil men that don't repent, Revelation 18, verse 4. Matthew 7, 21 and following, throughout the Bible, through Scripture, and the first coming of the Lord. If, you if you know, you aren't ready for the kingdom, you face it a type of judgment. It's not the final judgment, but it is a type of judgment casting you off this world into the Hadean realm. So if you want to start fighting the good fight of faith to restore the Hebrew and Greek Bible given to men by God, the Lord will show you here. And he'll show you now with, with Revelation chapter 1, now in seal. Paul Harvey had an interesting speech. Many of you have heard it. If I were the devil, he says. But the, now the rest of the story is that Paul Harvey couldn't finish because we didn't know until the sword of the Spirit was back again. What was Satan doing? Well, he's the second horseman of the apocalypse. He was stealing peace and sanity from humanity. He's the cause of all human suffering, James 5, 7 through 11. He's ruling over the kingdoms of men by sealing up the word of God. He's going to continue to do that for 43 years because we see the day of the Lord approaching. It means the kingdom of heaven is 43 years away, but it's a transition from the, from the kingdoms of men to the kingdom of God. I, Randall Maxwell, I'm the watchman over the second coming of the word of God. And the word of God is essentially saying the kingdom. Christ rules over his kingdom with perfect law of liberty, the royal law of agape love, with the rod of iron, the Bible from God, for 1,000 years, divided into two ages. So I'm Randall Maxwell. I'm the watchman over the second coming of the Word of God. Again, a watchman is all any of us could be since Satan has sealed away the Word of God with his lies for 1,680 years. We're all Gnostics. Some counted as righteous, some not. It's the hidden will of the Lord, though, for the Bible now to be restored. Hidden manna, the hidden revelation, actually the hidden pearl of great price, and we can go on and on. The greatest story ever told has been hidden for 1,680 years because it was so powerful 
If we couldn't have been free moral agents or Satan couldn't have ruled over men, and it's important for Satan to rule over men so that Christ could be crucified in the first century, so that evil men today could try to destroy the world and think they're going to inherit the earth because Satan had to rule over men to try to convince them. Of it. It's all about the battle over good and evil. Satan ruling over men. It had to be necessary. It had to be done with the Bible hidden away because the Bible from God is too powerful. Men can't stand against God. We couldn't have we we just couldn't have fought against God had we not been in great ignorance. So it's been my job for the past 43 years to edit out some of the lies, the wiles, the seals, the arrows, the darts of Satan from the Bible's men. Now, that doesn't mean I know much. But for 43 years, I've been given enough wisdom to gradually, I suppose, get ready if it's time, the sword of the Spirit. Now, realize that as we receive the Bible, it's going to be given over 43 year period of time, it's necessary that the work goes slow because men need time to repent. And once the Bible is fully restored, it'll be time for the kingdom. And really, we live in, a, in an insane world where everyone thinks they're God. But, you know, it's difficult during the transition time. The more you know, with the less the world knows. No, much of the Bible I don't know, but I know first principles mostly to get us to this point. And so we're going to have to start fighting the good fight of faith, removing the lies of Satan from the Bibles of men as we go along here, learning together. So again, it's been my job to give the sword of the spirit wine, just one man. Bible translations of men, you know, we think of them as being better if the more men involved in it. Well, God doesn't look at it that way. Men always have our thumbs on the scales of justice. The more men involved, the worse problems we've got. It's not in man to guide his own steps, his own path. So now as we're getting back to God's way, because we're in a transition period of time, it has to be the Word of God in part. We have to transition from men's ways to God's ways. We have to learn slowly. Because you think it's insanity, now wait until you understand what's going on in the world. And you can't possibly communicate because it's not time for some people to come out of the ways of me. I mean, for me, for 43 years, it's been like I couldn't convince people the difference between the love of God and the love of men or the truth from God, supernatural objective truth from God versus the subjective truth of men. It's simple matters, but and I was granted wisdom from above. But when Satan was ruling over the kingdoms of men, he certainly wouldn't allow men to even think anything about the ways of God. So my job for 43 years is to get this ready, basics ready, where we can start with first principles. So we can start fighting the good fight of faith. Again, Christianity's back. It's our turn to have the same 43-year period of time. Now, think about this. The Bible is of dual prophecy, the Word of God. And that's what's being restored, the Word of God. It's of dual prophecy. It was given for people in the first century, and it's given for modern man right now. Second age of Christianity. It's, it's what Ezra and Nehemiah foreshadowed with the rebuilding of the temple, the restoration of the temple in 531 B.C., the physical temple. Now the spiritual temple is being restored. The ways of God are back. We've had two falls of men, again, for totally in over 6,000 years, but now the ways of God, the second half of the ways of God are back. Second age of the kingdom, it's back. But again, we have to learn along the timeline. So we can just follow the timeline of the New Testament and, and learn when they learn certain things and probably when we are going to learn certain things. So again, we're ignorant. Remember the disciples and the the first century, they were arguing among themselves who was greater. Well, they understood the Bible better than we do, but we thought it was all good. It's been respected of persons. But as we come out of that, as we start coming out of the ways of men, and somehow there's new complications going against the ways of men, the ways of God. So we have to be go through this slowly in the Lord's timing, the Lord's pace. Revelation 1. Now, the second coming of the Word of God, the Sword of the Spirit, the New Testament Christianity, the Kingdom of Heaven. It's like taking 2,000 years off our calendars and, and uh, going back in time, almost. I mean, the Lord's Day, the Lord's Sabbath, 7,000 years of humanity. It's one day to the Lord. 1,000 years is one day to the Lord. So two days ago, we had the first coming of the Lord. And so now we just take 2,000 years away and we follow the, the timeline of 2,000 years. Now, remember, men's days are guided by how fast, you know, the earth is moving and other things. So it's going to be variable. So 
one day to the Lord is, is as a, a round of thousand, I think we can say, to be in plus or minus or whatever. So I think the Lord's going to return. The Nova's going to be here in about 20, 70, plus or minus seven years. I'm just throwing that out there. I think it's going to be about 2067. But again, that depends upon when we when the Lord is ready for us to start understanding these things. And it's also going to depend on who and when are people are going to understand these things. The Lord decides who starts out first and who comes second and how things are going to fall out. And so now because the Lord reveals the wiles of the devil, that Satan's a man, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4, the man of sin, Second horseman of the apocalypse, he's ruling over the kingdoms of men. We now know that we were like first century Christians in the last days of Satan's rule over the kingdoms of men. The Lord will be sanctified. He will be glorified. Leviticus 10.3. I mean, all these passages in the scripture that we didn't understand to come to light. This is what the Bible is about. 6,000 years of the ways of men. I mean, the spirit of dark ages, basically. and 1,000 years in the ways of God. So every knee is going to bow before him. All the earth is going to be silent before him. The Lord's day or the Lord's Sabbath is one day for the Lord. But to men, it's a thousand years of the Lord ruling over the kingdoms of men with the word of God, wisdom from above, divided into two ages. See, the ways of God had to be hidden away for us to even be in the ways of men. The Lord stepped back, hid his face, power, glory, majesty for all this time so that we could come to learn that the ways of men don't work, getting ready so Satan could rule over this world and so we could get ready for the second age of spiritual warfare, which lasts 43 years until the second coming of Christ. So Revelation is a vision about the outline of the 43 years of Christian spiritual warfare in the New Testament. First thing to remember is that probably at best, we're only going to have 43 more years to read through the Bible. This We're looking at this Revelation 1. If we have a chance to look at 43 more years, it might be even surprising to most of us. Most of us are not going to live 43 more. But as we read, we follow the pattern left for us from the New Testament. We fight the good fight of faith. We follow this timeline. Revelation is the last section of the Bible and was completed and delivered to the saints in 70 AD, which means the kingdom would come after that. So it's the same thing for us at 2,000 years. The seals are broken, the trumpets sound, the bowls of wrath, the stripes. All these visuals are of the word of God being restored or, or poured out in the first century. We're gradually, through the years, we're going to learn the Bible well enough to be ready for the kingdom. Again, we don't want to learn many things too quickly. It's just, it's just it's things more difficult. The more you understand in a crazy world, sometimes the harder it is. So this is a time of great enlightenment. I mean, so much so that it's only going to be this world for a thousand years. First group, and then, and then you know, it's going to be done. Man's lot time on earth. The kingdom's going to be turned over to God the Father, and it's going to be a great wedding in heaven. So that, seven thousand years of man on this earth. So let's look at our text. Revelation chapter one, the apocalypse of Jesus, the anointed one, which was given the Godhead. There, there's a life Satan. Satan says that Elohim is singular in number, that God, didn't, Christ wasn't God in the flesh. And that's how he convinced humanity that Christ doesn't have all authority. That's the first line. So I'm highlighting some of these, these lies. And, uh, Apocalypse, I highlight that because there's no reason for us to translate the Bible. We just need to go back to the original. This is about restoring the Hebrew and Greek Bible that was delivered once and for all time to the saints in 70 A.D. So the Godhead, what things need to take place in brief time, and he signified it, having sent through the messenger of him, the servant, he, John. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit involved in from God, <laughs> not in the Bible's men. The Bible's men is subject to truth. Satan lied to us. Who is a witness? The Word, the Godhead, and the report given of Jesus Christ, inasmuch as he saw. Supremely blessed. There it is. We have the Bible back now, and we're going to be blessed reading it because it means something. Words of God are powerful, supremely blessed. And when the kingdom comes, 43 years, if we read it, understand it, and obey it, it's going to be all spiritual blessings in Christ. Guess what else is going to happen at that time? Father of all comforts, Lord of all mercies, good shepherds. But all of the things that Satan stole from us from the with the Word of God. We haven't had the Word of God. Supremely blessed. 
the read again ones, and the hearing the word, the prophecy, and fulfilled by obeying the things in it, having been written for time is near. So there we go. We have the Bible back. The time is with just the sword of spirit now, but in 43 years, we're going to have the Bible back, and then we'll be in the second age of the kingdom. John, to the seven, called out of the ways of men, one, the end, the Asia, and Asia, my grace to you, and peace. Again, we didn't have the peace that comes from God, peace between God and man, not the same way that we will have salvation brought down from heaven. I mean, peace is, we don't have peace, that's why the Nova's coming. Peace that Satan stole, he, Revelation 6, 4, henceforth, the now and the I was one and the I will be one and from the seven spirits who stand before the throne of God. So we have a vision, the book of Revelation, and seven spirits. There's not seven Holy Spirits, but these represent seven prophets of Asia Minor that the Holy Spirit use their tongues or their pens or whatever to deliver the word of God to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Again, why why am I calling prophets? The word is angelos, and, and men translate the word angel to mean two different things. Why? Because spiritual warfare is between God and man, and Satan does everything he could in the Bibles of men to try to confuse confuse that. And from Jesus, Christo, the anointed one, witness the faithful, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, the agape love, loving us one and loosing us from the sins. And I notice that agape, what do we have in Bible's meaning? Love. Not, it doesn't work. You know, phileo love, if you don't have agape love, it's respect to persons. Remember Jesus, some men told him, here's your mother and brethren. Don't you going to quit talking to us and go talk to them? Aren't you respect your persons, Jesus? No. Who is my mother and my brethren? Jesus was not a respected person. He, he loves all. He's humanity the same. And now we have the love of God. By the way, you can't be a Christian without the love of God. Agape. So we need to quit saying love. Use the Greek word agape. Store the Bible. The power of the Bible. Us one and loosing us from the sins of us through the of him blood. And he is of us through the of him blood. And he is... And he is making us a kingdom priest to the member of the Godhead and father of him to him. The glory and the dominion, the ages of the ages. So Christ is back. The ways of God are back. We're in the ways of men. Satan drew. Everything changes. Behold, he's coming with the clouds. There we are. Verse 7. We'll have all spiritual blessings. That's going to rule over us. God be love. Peace on earth. God be love for all people. Perfect preacher, King of kings, the Lord of lords. Behold, he's coming with the clouds. We're going to be able to see the Nova coming that's going to cast Satan off this world again for the second time. Uh, so we can observe it now. Some of us, those who've been granted to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, we can, we can see these things. But every eye is going to see when the Nova, when this all this cosmic dust is like a magnet drawn to the sun and sun turns black. It's going to be cast out to this world. Some horrific things are going to happen, and we would lose our lives if it were not for the fact that God's going to protect his own. Ephesians 2, 17, the ages to come, two different ages of the kingdom. The Lord's going to take care of those from the Nova. Those who him pierced and who well because of him, all the tribes of the earth, yes, amen. Remember Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, the kingdom of God is going to break up and consume all the kingdoms of men. Now, you know, hopefully we're going to be consumed and go into the kingdom of God instead of being destroyed. At times of bigness, the Lord went and he overlooked, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17, 30. Behold, he's coming with the clouds and we'll see him every eye and those who him pierced and will wail because of him all the tribes of the earth. Yes, amen. When at the last days, kingdoms of men, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the Godhead, the being now and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. Couldn't understand 
the book of Revelation before why? Because the ways of God are size the heavens above the ways of men. We can't understand the Bible. We can't understand what God is talking about unless he's unless it's time for him to deliver his prophecy to humanity. Verse 9, I, John, the brother of you and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and endurance in Christ Jesus, was on the island the called Patmos on account of the word of God, the word of the Godhead. He was suffering. All who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's not talking about those in the apostasy. I mean, the Lord still watches out for us and takes care of us with his watchmen at, at times, but we're we're learning that you know we can't save ourselves basically that we need god to bring down salvation from heaven to save us from ourselves i john the brother of you and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and endurance in jesus was on the island the called patmos on account of the word of the godhead and the testimony of jesus I was in spirit in the Lord's day. What is the Lord's day? The kingdom. Divided in two ages. Second Peter 3 8. So in the first century, the Lord's day, about 70 AD, just when the Bible was completed, it was all it seemed to be happening at the same time and even the destruction of Rome. Why was the temple in Jerusalem destroyed on the Lord's day? Because Satan was in the temple. He was a man. He was pretending to be. I mean, he, he, was, he was a demon, but he was pretending to be God, possessing the bodies of men, Second Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. So he'd taken over the temple. And so Satan was ruling over the king of men, just like he is now. What's going to happen when the when uh, Nova comes again? It's going to destroy all the buildings of men. I don't know if we can <laughs> convert buildings over. I assume we're going to get rid of everything that's any kind of a stumbling block in this world. It's going to happen. The world's going to be destroyed by fire just like it was a flood. It's going to be completely cleansed for the righteous to inherit. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a voice, loud, like that of a trumpet, saying, What you see, write in a scroll, and send to the seven, again, the called out of Gnosticism ones, there's not been no churches in this world, Ephesus and Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And I, having turned, I saw seven lampstands golden and in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, be having been clothed to the feet and having been girt about at the breast with a belt, golden belt. So here's Christ. Christ is back. Second coming of Christ. Well, there it is. Second time we can understand the book of Revelation. We have the word of God, the Bible from God. The also the head of him. Again, this is a vision that we're seeing this picture. I'm, I'm, Christ is not going to look like a, a lamb. He's not actually a lamb. Is he? He's not actually a door. He's not actually has a sword coming out of his mouth. And this is the sword of spirit, by the way. Sword of spirit's back. The also the head of him and of the hairs white as if wool, white as if snow, and of the eyes of him are like a flame of fire. And the feet of him are like fine bronze as in a furnace, having been refined and the voice of him is like the voice of waters, many, and holding in the right hand of him stars, seven, and out of the mouth of him a sword, two-edged sword. I think it means Christ preached for three years. The Holy Spirit delivered the Bible for 40 years, 43 years. Double-edged sword, sword of spirit. And the face of him is like to the sun shining in the full strength of day. So the brightness of Christ, his glory. He hid he, he away his face, power, glory, majesty, so Satan could rule over the kingdoms of men. But now he's back, or he's on his way back. He will be back in 43 years to rule over his kingdom. When I saw him, I fell at the feet of him as 
though dead, and he and he placed the right hand of him upon me, saying, Not fear, I am the first and the last, and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, living, I exist to the ages of the ages, and I have the keys of death and of Hades, also the keys of the kingdom, that he gives it to us as well. We now understand it. Seven days. Seven cosmic days, if you will. And we're in the second time for the age of the kingdom. Write, therefore, what you have seen, and what things are, and what will come after these things. So, you know, now we can outline the whole Bible easily. What what things had John seen before? Well, the ways of men, right? And what's now? Well, it's the transition from the ways of God, from the ways of men to the ways of God. And then what will you see? The kingdom. That's what the book of Revelation is about. Spiritual warfare going from Gnosticism to the kingdom. That's what the New Testament is about. The mystery, the seven stars which you see on the right hand of me, and the seven lampstands, the golden, the seven stars, the messengers of the seven churches. Again, there it is. The called out of the Gnosticism once. The seven churches, ecclesia, are and the lampstands, the seven Seven assemblies call out of the world they are. And so the kingdom was coming in the first century. There were seven churches. Now, Christianity is going to continue for us for about 720 years. For them, it, I don't know, to about 340 A.D. And then, and then Satan was back ruling over the kingdom of man during the apostasy. Called out of Gnosticism, ones are, and the lampstand, the seven, seven assemblies called out of the world they are. What we read about in, in Revelation 2 and 3 is about the seven churches coming out of the ways of men, Gnosticism. You'll see, see oftentimes in their overcoming, what overcome the ways of men. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What do men repent of? Gnosticism. So that's what we're going to be doing today as well. Second age of Christianity. Repent for the second coming of Christ is at hand. The second age of the coming of Christ is at hand. The second age of the word of God. Is at hand. Again, it's not me saying that. That's what the Lord said. And the Father in heaven said, Hear you, Him. It's time to listen to the ways of Elohim are back. It's time to listen to Christ. It's time to hear Him. Not the preaching of men, the preaching of God. 